I grew up in Tanzania. When I wasn't helping my mom in the kitchen, I was watching cooking shows on television. My favorite was a British chef. I loved everything about her because she was quite prim and proper. I never imagined a girl from Tanzania could ever be like her. When I was younger, my dad had a veggie garden. My chore was to remove the weeds and then to harvest, to wash and to slice them up and help my mom. My mom used to make mfino for us every day when we came back from school. It's quite a simple dish, but it was one of my favorite things ever. The big thing I learned from my mom in the kitchen was that you have to feel everything. She would just take some salt and fill it with her hand and then she'll put it in the water and I'll ask mama, how much did you use? She would say, you will learn when you're older. As a student, I was never satisfied with just being um, average. I was very much driven and quite bold. I think the biggest thing I got from school was learning precision. You could not just do it a uh, free flow like my mom did. At home, cooking wasn't really seen as a profession, but I eventually convinced my parents to let me study food and consumer science at Cape Peninsula University of Technology. My trip from East London to Cape Town, it felt like freedom <laughs> because I come from a very strict family. Um, but I, I must say I was very nervous. I was often labelled as the bookworm, but it was cool because I was determined and I had a vision. At that time, I knew I wanted to make something great of myself, but at the same time, I was quite worried because the expectations were very high. What I thought was going to happen after varsity was that I was going to get a great job. I was an A student. I was, you know, I was the eat girl. And that didn't happen. I was a nobody. <laughs> I love moving forward. Once I'm still, I get frustrated. So, nine months later, no job, I decided to go back to my lecturers and ask for help. I had to do a lot of growing up. And within no time, my lecturers told me Drum Magazine was looking for a young, dynamic person whom they could train into becoming a food editor. They said, Sibs, when we saw this position, we thought you. <laughs> I think I went to about three interviews and there were quite strong candidates. Uh, but I held my head up high and I was just gunning for it and just really crossing my fingers. So at DRUM, I worked so hard, creating recipes and testing. Sometimes they would fail and would do it again until we had it right. I loved the writing part of it, doing stories with people. It was production, it was drama, and I loved it. I started evolving more of my mom's recipes and built up quite a following. One of my favorite recipes that I developed was Mfino fritters. And then I got a call from Food Network and that meeting was awesome. All they did was tell us about yourself and me. <laughs> I can talk. My first day on set on Siva's table was quite intimidating, but I'm like, Siva, they came all the way from London for you. There is no time for you to feel small. You better rise up to the occasion. It was my time to take the recipes I learned in my home and teach people all over the world how to make it in theirs.